So now I am going to create one table. Okay. So this is the table. Okay. Sample dummy table you can create. So it is already there in my machine. So I'll just uh, use of that or I can drop this table and create. So I have a table created so to practically show you how a pre and post SQL works and interview purpose important. Okay. So this is the table we have in a database right now. So before going to start my mapping, I'm just going to just to indicate that. So there's nothing here. So before going to run my mapping, so I'm going to go and keep Okay, below is still okay. Insert into so this is the pre scale, and I am going to place here. What I am doing? Okay, so I'll just say. So I'm manually keeping. So I'm I'm preparing a scale. Okay. So in this table, I want to give. Okay, which is the mapping currently running? So pre scale means before going to run my scale. So I just want to put a entry into this table saying that you are mapping this particular mapping. This particular source qualifier is about to start. Okay. So I just want to indicate that. So this is the mapping name. Okay, you can anything you can create, but here I'm showing a very uh, reasonable what generally we can do in a real time. So mapping name. Okay, so this is the mapping name. Okay, status. So right now we have a status here. What is the status? A scale started, or you can say about to start. Okay, and then the third column is activity start date. So when exactly? The activity started, so I'm going to use a sys date. So this particular mapping, in this mapping, source SQL means whatever SQL you mentioned or Informatica generated SQL is about to start here. So I'll just keep it here. I will take this one and then place over here. Okay. So like this, here you can create and you can. Technically, any valid SQL statements you can keep it. There is nothing. Wrong. So, what is the useful or what is the best to applicable scenario? I am just giving here. But any SQL you can you can write a create table or insert. Only thing is you cannot write a select statement because it is going to execute on the database. Select requires okay a select operation to be uh, fetch and then show somewhere, but it is not going to do that. Okay, that's why you cannot keep a select and. Uh, like this, you can keep one. If you want to keep more than one command, you can place one after one and uh, terminating with a semicolon. So this is one table, okay? And um, whenever I run before starting my SQL start uh, SQL, so this will go and insert some record into this table. So that will indicate me that, okay, when this SQL has been started. And in the same way, post SQL, post SQL means once your SQL is completed, okay. So what I am going to do. I am putting one more record saying that uh, your SQL is completed. So this way if I go and see data in this table at the end of the mapping it will tell you when your source qualifier started, when your source qualifier ended. So the time between this time and that time will tell you how much time your SQL has been taken to execute completely. So you will get some auditing information here. Okay. So, but here try to understand what is pre and post SQL. Okay, this is one of the good example. So now that I have added this, okay, I am going to run this in the. Okay, so since we have seen the mapping there, so I am reopening this workflow. So you can go and say refresh mapping or even if you don't refresh also then because when you open newly from workflow manager it will definitely fetch 
new information. But if you already opened here, and then if you made any changes, so you can go and say refresh. Or if you don't, if you don't know how to refresh, just close the complete workflow manager and then reopen it, so that it will try to refresh your mapping automatically into session. So now, if you go to session properties, okay, and if you remember last time. Uh, in the mapping tab, one of the place in the mapping tab, in the sources tab, I was giving some connection, this connection. Okay. If you come down here, automatically you can see what are the changes you have done, what are the skills you have mentioned. So those skills also you can see. Even to double verify even whether your session has got properly refreshed or not, okay, you can make use of this. So this is the pre and this is the post SQL. So I'm going to say okay. Okay, so now when I run this mapping, uh, forget about how, when it is going to be, but in the log file, we should see that whatever SQL I mentioned in the pre-SQL should be executed before my SQL, actual SQL starts, and the second one should be executed later part. So first, we will see the output, whether anything got loaded into this table or not. So. Okay, you can see two regards. One says that M underscore SQ, it is a mapping name which I have typed and oh, this is a start and oh, this is a complete. So if you go and see timestamp, two care of date, hours, minutes, it will tell you what minute exactly it started and oh, it's completed and what minute is complete. So now this entries are there means perfectly they are executed. So let's go and see in the log file what time they are ex executed. Okay, so this is all, if you see, this is the scale actually, is SQL override, SQL override, okay, that we have written. And if you come down, you will see the scales actually we have mentioned to, to be executed before and after, okay. And if you search for here, okay, you can see here. Executing pre-session SQL. Pre-session SQL means that is a pre-SQL. So insert into map lag values. Okay, SQL start. Okay, so this is executing pre-session. Okay, then you can see your actual SQL. Okay, which is supposed to fetch data from your database is here. Okay, and then here you can see executing post session. So you can see this is executing after completion of this SQL. Okay, this is where SQL completed. Okay, this is the statement. And this is the starting point here. And this is the in between. So you can clearly see that. Okay, this is getting executed before and this is actual SQL. Okay, and then you can just come forward. Okay, and then this is the, so this is how this works. So now I'll show you a couple of other things also. Okay, and uh, anyway, we'll go detail later. Okay, but when you are looking this kind of, when you are trying to insert this kind of information, okay, when, while you are writing these SQLs are not only here, whether in this tab or in this tab or in this tab. So there are some useful pre-built variables are there. What are variable means? So, like there are, this is a big topic actually. We'll be discussing very detailed in end of the mapping. So whenever variable topic comes. But just to give some heads up, when you go here, if you want to use, so right now if you see, I'm using M underscore SQ. What is that? It is a mapping name. I'm taking the, I'm typing my mapping name and then it is taking and then inserting. Okay. So if you want to, so generally, uh, whatever SQL I've written, generally that is called auditing. Auditing means uh, getting the statistics. Even in the data version, we discussed that there is an audit dimension which will help you to calculate the statistics. Okay. When it is started, when it is ending and all that. Okay. So if you want to know which mapping, 
is so right now i am typing so rather than you typing if i want to use automatically whatever what is the mapping name right now it is running so you can directly you can go here and then double click this pm mapping name so this is a variable okay built in called built in variable okay it will give you which is the mapping running currently so i don't need to type it okay in the same way if you want to know which is the session currently running of this so you it is going to insert some values into the table or you are planning to use that mapping name somewhere wherever you want to use so this will give you current what is the current mapping it is running what is the workflow name session name folder name run mode session start time your actual session start time okay sys date so we already used it okay and in addition to this it will also tell you what is the source table right now it is running reading data for a particular table or sql right so these are all common you know and apart from this it can also tell you see pm emp inf at the rate table means see this is the source qualifier table name from which what is your actual source qualifier table name what is your actual target in your mapping these values also can be automatically captured from here so i am just right now i am showing the mapping name which i want to do automatically get it from the mapping automatically and in the same way so without the, we typing the mapping names and all we can make use of this okay these are all built in variables so you can get the table name you can also get mapping name these are all sample mapping you can see them here but there is a, a variable is a big topic there are so many things are there that end we can discuss but wherever you see a mapping variable variable so these are built in ready made variables you can use wherever you want so since we have changed some configuration here so i need to refresh here and whenever you refresh if you want to check whether those whatever changes you have done you can come to mapping tab you can go to sources and then you can come here and see okay so this is dollar pm mapping i have not written my mapping name okay so it will it should take it from the Okay, so this time if you see already truncated and I just scan it, so it pick up it picked up the exact the mapping name. So I didn't use the mapping name. So so this way you can see it is picking up the mapping name from the repository itself. Okay, and then storing. In the same way, other variables also you can use. This is one simple example. 